Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, it's Sunday, we are in the kitchen and we are making this. It's a Snickers Millionaire Shortbread. Honestly, this thing is delicious. It's sweet, it's nutty, it's salty. That's it. I mean, what more could you really be looking for in a Snickers Millionaire shortbread, which I bet you didn't even know existed until you turned onto this channel right now. So, all we're gonna do is get to the recipe. It's short, it's sweet. Let's do it. This is Snickers Millionaire shortbread. Millionaire shortbread, absolutely delicious and absolute classic. Very easy to do. This is a quick and easy version. Caramel is a visual, so we don't need to get the thermometer out. Although if you have a thermometer, great, but not necessary. But yeah, let's get this together as quickly as we can. So first we need to make the shortbread. I've turned the oven on to 180. That's just gonna preheat while we make the shortbread and then we're gonna bake it for 20 minutes, let it cool. Then we're going to make the caramel and then we're going to do the topping. So let's get this show on the road. First things first, we're going to line the tin. So what I do is sit a piece of greaseproof paper over the top and then I cut in some little angular lines on the corner of the tin. And then slide it in and it means that we end up with nice neat edges we can make it nice and square but what you can do is just use a tiny bit of the butter that we're going to use for the shortbread and we're just going to put a little bit on either side and all that's going to do is stick the paper to it Just like that and now we're gonna make the shortbread so we have got 250 grams of plain flour of plain flour excuse me 75 grams of caster sugar and 175 grams of butter and what we need to do is make the shortbread so we're gonna break this up into little squares and we're gonna add it into here and we're gonna add a pinch of salt so you soften butter as it's a little bit easier and then we're just gonna Chop it all up into little bits, make it into fine breadcrumbs, and then mix it all together into a dough. And that's it. Oh, bit of leftover toast on this bit. <laughs> Give it a little mix so that that sugar is mixed in with the flour, and then we rub. So you just need to make sure that all them lumps of butter are evenly distributed. Oh. I do love shortbread. And there we go. So we've got a sand-like texture. All of the lumps of butter are combined with the flour. And then all we need to do is pack it into a dough. And then we'll pack it into the tray. So we've got a lump like that. And then we're just gonna flatten it out into the tray. And you just wanna make sure that it's even all the way around. So once it's all packed into the tray like this, you'll see there are dimples all in it from where I push it down with my fingers. So I'm just gonna take the back of a spoon and we're just gonna spread it out so it's nice and smooth. And this way as well, you can also tell if there are any slightly thicker pieces or slightly thinner. So it's a good way to be able to even out the mix. And now it looks like this. And then what we're gonna do is with a fork, we're just gonna put some little holes in it. This is just so that the pastry can breathe a little because otherwise 
the steam will get stuck and it might be a bit soggy and we want it crisp. So there it is with the little holes in and now we're going to put it into the oven at 180 for 15 to 20 minutes. This is varying on how large your tray is. You know, if you made it in a tray that was half this size, your layer is obviously gonna be a lot thicker and take a lot longer to cook. So, my oven does run a little bit hot, so I'm just gonna put a timer on, and at 12 minutes we'll check it, and we just want it lightly browned and firm to touch. So we'll see you then. So, the shortbread is done. It was in for 20 minutes, but as you can see, it's all gone golden brown even around the edges so only just very light but that's what you want so now we're just going to let that cool and sit and we're going to make the caramel okay so this is like cheats easy caramel we're not we're not caramelizing just sugar on its own we're not using glucose we're doing it in a real cheats way but this is what makes it easy for people who maybe are not so confident in the kitchen so all we need to do is get all of our ingredients in the pan and we're going to warm them up and this is all about the visuals often often when i'm cooking in the kitchen it's about the visuals and the hearing and the senses you know it's not just smell and taste which are involved when you cook so we'll get this on and we'll just follow the caramel cooking and you'll see when it starts to get to the thickness that we need so we've got sugar 100 grams of light mascovado 100 grams of sugar and here I've got a can of condensed milk, so that's 395 grams of condensed milk. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pour all of that in here and we're just gonna bring it up to the boil. It's so naughty, but it's so delicious. So make sure you get all of that out of the can and into here. Maybe just have a quick glow. Oh, and it was yum. That reminds me of being a kid. And then the only other things that we're gonna add to this caramel once it's done is a little bit of sugar, a little bit of miso, and some chopped peanuts which have been roasted. These were actually a bit of a blend. I had some that were roasted and I had some that had like a, a honey salt crust on them so I just chopped them all up. But they're all gonna be added to this once it's all done. So once it all comes together, it kind of gives you that snickery kind of taste. Um, and it's just really it's just really good and then also what we're gonna do on the top when we've melted all the chocolate on we're just gonna sprinkle a bit of salt on it so we're gonna put this on bring it to the boil and we can watch the caramel as it gets made so all we need to do with this caramel is we put it on first of all and start to melt and we're just gonna continually stir it stir it with the spatula so that the sugar doesn't stick to the pan and then once it's all sort of nicely starting to dissolve, we're gonna turn the heat up to medium high and we're just gonna stir it constantly and then bring it to a boil. And then when it comes up to the boil, we're gonna lower the heat back down to low, stirring constantly for about five to 10 minutes until the mixture's thickened. And we'll see it change. You know, you can visibly see it from what it looks like in the beginning. To where it is at the end and then we're going to take it off the stove and we're going to add to it a touch of miso and nuts a little pinch of salt and then we're going to pour it all over that base and it's going to be absolutely sensational so as you can see there towards the end the bubbles were coming were becoming much thicker the bubbles they were a lot slower that means that it's thickened up nicely i mean you can see that there are a few flecks where it's like starting to catch on the side, which is why it's really important to stir it constantly because otherwise you can easily end up with something that's caught. I mean, it's even, it's caught here on the side of the pan, but you kind of can't help that. So now it's come off the stove. It's cooled a little. I've added in the peanuts, a pinch of salt, and then the all important miso. I'm just gonna add half a teaspoon in and we're just gonna mix that all together. And you need to work a little bit fast here towards the end because obviously this caramel will now start to get cold or cool as it's no longer on the heat and will start to thicken. So make sure you keep moving it around. It's all mixed up. And then we just need to pour it on top 
of our shortbread. So that goes on. Spread it all around. Oh, this is gonna be so naughty, but so good. It's such a quick and easy dessert to make. You just have to make it ahead of time because the caramel needs to sit. Oh, and it just looks, it does almost look like a Snickers. This is, this is gonna be great when we cut into it. But what we do need to do now is let it cool. So you probably realistically need to give it two hours cooling because you want that caramel to be completely set. Now that caramel has cooled just a tiny bit. Oh, it's delicious. I mean, it's sweet, but it's salty. There's salt from the miso. There's a little pinch of salt in there. It's really nice because often Melina's shortbread is very, very sweet. So we'll put this to one side. And then, like I said, once it's got the chocolate on, we can just cut it up into blocks. You can give it away to friends as a nice little present, especially around Christmas time. It's a great little idea to make something nice. Or you can just cut it up, have it sat in the fridge, ready for your cup of tea in the afternoon. Or you can cut it up and for the work week, you've got a nice little snack to take with you for once you've had your lunch. So let's get that cool and we'll come back to it in a bit. So it's two hours later and the caramel has well and truly set. This thing literally looks incredible. So now we just need to do the chocolate top. Now this chocolate top is totally up to you. If you like milk chocolate, use milk chocolate. If you like white chocolate, use white chocolate. But for me, I've gone for good old 70% dark chocolate because the darkness and the bitterness work really well with the sweet and the salty. So we're, all we're gonna do is we're gonna get a pan with some water in here and we've got a bowl that fits in the pan. Ideally, what you, what you want is the water not to be touching the bottom of the bowl because then the chocolate can kind of cook a little bit and you don't really want that. We just want to heat it up and melt it. So just break up the chocolate into chunks. So it's like that into the bowl and we're just going to put this on a low simmer until that chocolate has melted. So our chocolate has pretty much all melted. There's just a little lump in there, but the heat of the bowl and the melted chocolate will melt that. So we'll just put that to one side. Be careful, hold your bowl with a tea towel because it will be hot when you take it off the stove. And then I'm just gonna use the salt grinder and just grind a little bit of salt here. So I've got a little bit in the dish that I can sprinkle over the top. If you had some molden sea salt or like some flaky sea salt, that would be incredible for the top for this. And there you go, all the lumps are melted. And all we have to do is pour it on the top and let it set. This is where a spatula is really handy because you can wipe any excess that's on the spatula on the sides and really make sure you get all of the chocolate out of the bowl. And then we just spread it over the top. Oh, this looks amazing. Last little bit for me. And then just give it a knock and a shuffle and it'll even out all of that chocolate. And then we're just gonna take that little bit of salt and just sprinkle it in the top. Oh, yum. Now we'll let that set and we'll come back to it in 10 or 15 minutes and we can cut it up and have a slice of this absolutely delicious. I'm gonna call it, <clears throat> I'm gonna call it a millionaire's snicker bar. Yum. And there it is. The chocolate has set, as has the caramel. Now we just need to get stuck into it. What is really good with this is when you're cutting something like this, especially because it's got the caramel and the chocolate, is we're gonna get the knife really nice and hot. And 
and then because it's nice and hot it should melt into the chocolate oh, and just create the most perfect slice oh my god and there it is three beautiful layers of caramel chocolate and shortbread of snickers millionaire shortbread so let's give it a taste 